the community's budget, so we should treat it as such and give people the opportunity to, to give us some input. Definitely a, uh, with a limited time um, due to the fact that we could be spending hours here. Um, but it, since it's the community budget, I think people from the community should be given the opportunity to, to also address us in, in, in items that they think is, is important to them. Uh, to get started, we're gonna go with revenue review. Uh, we have Mr. Ayanello, and I also would like to thank uh, Mr. Bob Nunes, who's here, <coughs> our fiscal overseer. Um, he will be here uh, today, so it's exciting to have him, and thank you very much for the work that you've done for the city. And Mr. Ayanello, thank you very much for helping us uh, get this book on time and uh, you know, being available to all of us uh, during this time. Mr. Arnello, why don't we, we get started with uh, the, the revenue review? Revenue review is on page 13, that's correct. Page 13, for There's a summary on page uh, on page 11, a high-level summary of the for the general fund of the operating revenues and the operating expenditures, and then on page 13 begins the detailed review uh, of the uh, revenue components or each line item of the revenue components, and they go from page 13 all the way through um, to page uh, 16. Okay. So why don't we, I guess. Um Go over the summary and and when council, if I, councilors have any any more specific questions, we could go by the more detailed uh, uh, information that has been provided to us. But why don't you just gi just give us a, an overall review of what we have on page eleven? Okay, on page e, uh, on page eleven again the. Uh, Key thing I want to point out is the budget is the general fund budget is balanced. We're proposing um, estimated revenues of two hundred forty-seven million two hundred twenty-two thousand seven hundred eighty-two dollars, and we're proposing expending the exact same amount. So we have a, a balanced budget, which total revenues minus expenditures comes out to zero. Um, the thing to point out here, uh, just for um, for someone who reviewing, is that. Um, the, the actual expenditures on some of these line items, uh, the actual um, revenues, I mean, on some of these line items are not, are not considered estimated revenues for budget purposes. In the actual revenues uh, from FY12, FY13, and uh, through May 14th of FY14, uh, for example, taxes and excise, those are, those are actual tax collections and there might be prior year collections mixed in. And our FY15 recommendation, we can only consider FY15 estimated tax levy. So that's uh, sometimes you'll see some variances in the, the revenues, but um, rest assured that the budget is balanced. Yeah. Mr. Arnello, <coughs> I know that there has been, you know, the, the, the mayor, when he proposed the budget, he said that there's no new taxes added to this particular budget. Um, but we do see a $1.2 million increase uh, in, in taxes and excise. Uh, and many members of the community have asked how there's an increase here, yet not uh, 2.5 or, or any percentage increase. The, in, the increase in the uh, in the tax uh, the tax levy amount uh, is um, we didn't go up to two and a half percent allowable by uh, by by law uh, over the previous year. But there is a, uh, there are, uh, we were allowed to go uh, up for new growth or increase it by the amount of new growth, which is, uh, you know, uh, additions to buildings, uh, uh, um, increases in uh, building permits and so forth. Uh, the assessors are allowed to calculate that, that uh, number and increase, uh, increase the tax levy for increase in construction and or um, uh, property. Uh, so we, we did go up the, we did insert a, a revenue estimate of 1.1 million in new growth and the, um, uh, we did not go up the, we did not increase uh, uh, tax revenues by the prop two and a half, which is about 1.3 million, would have been 1.3 million plus. Hmm. So we did not go up that amount. Mayor? 
Councillor President Mark. Uh, okay, so let me let me understand. Uh, people are not going to pay. Property owners are not going to pay additional taxes. This is totally. This is this uh, one point two. Uh, 1.258 million dollars is going to come out of growth specifically new growth okay right okay so if you put a garage on your home you're going to get an increased tax bill okay uh, but you're you not going to get an increased tax bill yeah. uh, for property was a misunderstanding purposes. obviously and, and and I had that misunderstanding that that people were actually going to be paying additional taxes because of their appraised value the different uh, increase in value of the property so that, that, that so that is not correct. Well, that that the the there are many reasons why somebody's tax bill increases. Um, if the tax rate remained the same, mm -hmm. I might have, get an increase in my tax bill if uh, the value of my property in my area increased. Mm -hmm. Someone else might might have uh, maybe their property in their neighborhood decreased, so they would get a less of a tax bill. Mm -hmm. But the tax levy in total, which is approximately fifty five million. Um, that's what we, um, that is going to remain the same. Okay, so the 1.2 million has nothing to do with the increase of value, assessed value of the property. Am I correct? That's right. That's just the additional new growth. And it's not 1.2 million, it's 1.1 million. Mm -hmm. The 1.258, uh, the difference there is the, we're comparing it to actual, um, uh, from the previous year's approved budget, there's a, there was a, an extra 100 and something thousand, I think, between the time we set the tax rate and when we set the tax bills out, there was an additional uh, increase in levy amount. The, can I, Mr. Vega, can you come forward? <coughs> Good evening, Council President. Is there, gonna be, is there gonna be a lot of difference in the assessed value of the properties between the previous year, 2014 and 2015? Do you foresee any? major changes? Well, we are going through a revaluation every three years. Uh, we're mandated by the Department of Revenue to uh, do a triennial certification, so we're conducting that as we speak. Um, I don't see a major shift in values, uh, to answer your question. Uh, we're at 97% of our uh, assessment to sale ratio, but mm -hmm. there's nothing out there that's indicating to me that you know um, singles or twos or threes are, are increasing. We have increased the uh, threes uh, and twos aligned with the market. So uh, we're pretty, we're looking at a pretty stable um, valuation for FY15. But that, uh, that increase in, va in assets value is not reflected here, am I correct? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, the new, as um, um, Mark uh, had mentioned, uh, new growth is um, anything that's coming on to the tax roll that was exempt last year. Mm -hmm. So all the uh, surplus properties that the city uh, sold off, um, mergers, subdivisions, um, anything in change of classification. If you have a uh, two family, you convert it to mixed use. Now the mixed use is gonna be picked up. TIFs, um, TIFs as well is a huge, huge uh, indication of our growth on the commercial industrial side when uh, the percentages start uh, decreasing and the years start diminishing. Um, the biggest uh, new growth component is personal property. Uh, existing uh, accounts that purchase new equipment and uh, new businesses coming onto the onto the tax roll. Um, so that's that's huge. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor, are there any additional questions on taxes and excise specifically? Or taxes and excise. How about um, charges for services, Mr. Anello? Anything? Uh, again, the on, on page uh, 50, on page 14, I mean, you'll see a detailed uh, a, a delineation of what is included in charges for services. Um, you can see the, um, uh, we estimated, we have uh, uh, in registry of, uh, registry fees, uh, motor vehicle registry marking fees at the registry, we've increased the estimated receipts in this line item uh, a total of uh, 55,000 and we've uh, got a total for charge of the services uh, of 75,000 over the previous year. Um, in, in charges for services, when we dis, uh, talk about recycling, recycle, which is the first line item, mm -hmm. it, is that connected specifically with recycling 
in the community? I, I think that sale of recycle bins. The sale of the recycle Yeah, I think they, they, when you need an extra recycle bin, they might charge you a, a, a small amount. Hmm. And another question specifically that I have is um, other fees. He seems like in fiscal year 2012, <laughs> We were, we managed to collect thirty six thousand dollars, but it seems that that amount keeps decreasing. What are those other fees that we're talking about? Is that on page fourteen, counselor? Yeah, page fourteen, which is um. Uh, other fines? Oh, other fees. Other Four fees. three three five. I see it. Yep, the next to last line. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I, you know, I'd have to look and see what the specific revenues are, but uh, those are probably just other fees from other departments, I'd have to look. Okay, because it is, like, we keep getting a substantial decrease year after year. And, uh, um, I, I could take a look, uh, you know, we, we took in uh, through, uh, so far through May 14th, we took in $10,270. Mm -hmm. We're only estimated 5,000 for next year. Um, and, and again, when we are estimating we often don't increase the estimates on every single line item. Uh, we're looking at the, the total um, uh, charges for services, which is 1.416, uh, 1,416,500. That's what goes on our tax recap. The details don't. So we often uh, just increase a couple of them. Uh, in this case, we're looking for 75,000 more from the previous year and all of the charges for services combined. Mm -hmm. Councilor, so are there any questions in this area? Okay. I'm sorry, I just an idea on, on page 13. It's a comment more than a question. I just don't want to throw it out there. Meals tax. Um, so Mike, can, I'm just going to throw it out there, and I'll talk to inspectional services when it's their time, but I just want to throw it out, which is what are, we, are we doing all that we possibly can for a fair playing field when it comes to meals tax? I, I, don't, ha I don't have there's too much on my plate right now, no pun intended, <coughs> to work on uh, meals tax and other kinds of issues. But I have heard conceptually that there are some establishments in the city that that kind of skirt the law where they're actually selling meals, but yet uh, they're not applying the meals tax on there. Hmm. Meanwhile, that's not fair to the actual restaurants that are uh, paying the licenses and doing all they're supposed to be doing. Um, and it creates an unpla unfair playing field. Um, not only that, but we've got some of these places that are doing the cooking and selling it. I'm not even sure they're getting the proper inspections for food for that kind of food uh, distribution. So if you have a comment, that's fine. Uh, but I just want to throw that out there that there, there may be we may be missing money here. Uh, well, I do have a comment, uh, and I have the <coughs> Deputy Commissioner of Revenue here to also speak, but meals taxes are collected by the state and remitted to the, to the community. Uh, so they're, and they're audited by the state. <coughs> and in my private practice, before I went and got into municipals, uh, I, I handled quite a few meals tax audits, and the, the state is out there auditing bars, restaurants, and so forth. And they do have uh, many techniques uh, to discern whether someone's cheating them or not. Mm -hmm. uh, does it happen? Yes, they can't audit everyone, but they do have an audit program to keep everybody honest. Having said that, uh, Bob, I don't know if Bob wants to comment, but uh, you can only have so many auditors out there on the payroll. But uh, I'm sure the state would love to have more auditors, but uh, they, are, they, they do have a program to spot check people uh, in all communities. And if you learn of anything, they do have a tax, uh, they have a fraud hot tip hotline. <laughs> and I'll be candid with you, I don't have enough time in my day to, yeah. to go down that route. I got some other, it's important, but I got other priorities that I'm working on. Uh, the other thing is we have a lot of bars and nightclubs in here that, that's supposed to be serving food. And I don't, I don't know if we keep track of how much food's being served at some of these uh, nightclubs. They're supposed to be restaurants, um, and sometimes it's, they're not serving the food. Uh, like they're supposed to be serving and if you call me to ask me which bar bars I'm not gonna be able to answer that question uh, but that's the stuff that I kind of hear about um, and and maybe there needs to be again it's an inspectional services question slash police department again to make sure that people are abiding by the rules sort of a fair playing field throughout the city more of a comment than a mm -hmm. I'm looking for a reaction all right so that was my comment on 13 on 14 uh, so I'm going back to my favorite subject today, which is the Bellevue Cemetery. Internments and sales of lots and graves, uh, the mayor's recommendation is $80,000 to $11,000 being brought in on there. So just so I'm clear again, the money that we're going to be bringing in over there, is all that money going to the general fund or a portion of it? This amount is the, this is the general fund portion. 
none of the revolving funds are reflected in this budget. So the cemetery is not getting any of this money this that's going right to the Bellevue, that's the general fund. It, this is the amount that is in the general fund uh, and we're expecting to go in the general fund. Last year we collected, or through May uh, 14th, we collected 69,365. Is this 50% of internments and the other 50% went into revolving fund? Uh, although it wasn't that high, so it can't be. But that there are um, uh, some funds uh, that the uh, a sale of some products that goes in the, re that the cemetery is allowed to have in the revolving fund and the rest goes into the general fund. Okay, let's move on, it's a busy night. Uh, downtown parking, don't we have some revolving funds for that? Can you explain why we have a line item for that? Uh, those are the, we, we, get a, we have an estimate of 400,000 which we anticipate bringing in this year uh, and that is for the on-street parking meters um, and that's our, um, uh, basically the, the minimum amount that we receive, 400,000. If they collect over a certain threshold, which I believe is about 1.4 million, we, we, uh, we, we obtain, uh, we share the overage, 90% uh, to the city, 10% to the vendor. Cable TV license, uh, is that the money that the various, uh, you know, Verizon and Comcast and whatever else uh, pays to the city? Is that what that revenue reflects? And that's a, a projection of nine thousand dollars. Yeah, I believe that is a uh, payment from the cable. Uh, I think it's Ver Verizon and Comcast. I think are here for FiOS and Comcast. So we do get a cut of that action, nine thousand. I'm just curious. How, I mean, how does that? Do we have any clue as to how that compares with other communities? I assume it's a license fee. And I'm, and I don't know. My, my, I'm, I hear again. I, I don't have all the details on these things. The things that I'm hearing is that the license is, is due or needs to be renewed on that and um, and I guess the question is are we getting our fair share and is the money properly been put into the various programs and what's going on at this, the Channel 8 studios on Essex Street. But for purposes tonight, the $9,000, I'm just wondering when that's gonna be renewed and should we expect more money in the future? Can I ask you to look into that for me? I can. Thank you. <coughs> Any additional questions? I, I have a question. Mr. Alonello. If you look back at page 13, uh, item 4191 and 4192, um, in the hotel motel tax, initially, uh, 2014, there was a projection of 125,000, yet uh, only 113,000 has been collected to, through the month of May. Yes. Why would you make a projection of an additional twenty thousand dollars if, if the goal was not met in two thousand fourteen? The uh, we get the uh, uh, hotel and the meals tax comes in quarterly to the city, so through uh, May fourteenth uh, is probably three quarters. So there's probably another quarter coming in, um, and so we do. Uh, you know, I did. I do look at this, uh, and Bob's here to also looks at it. But we do, uh, um, based on this year, we estimate the FY15 will go up a little bit. That's why we've increased it. Okay, so it is based on, uh, you are projecting that you are going to get more than the, 100, the 125,000 that was projected, and that's why you are, you are increasing, right, for three projecting quarters, an increased yeah. amount of 20,000. Right. Okay, okay. Um, and the same thing for, uh, for the meal tax. Meals Am tax, yes. Okay. They're both, both exceeding, uh, so far they're exceeding their expectation. Okay. Yes, my last question was the firebox fee, the last one on page 14. Again, that's another one of those roller coaster ones. Uh, 12, FY12 was 33, stayed about the same in 13, 34. And then we, we really ramped it up to $50,000 uh, this fiscal year. Well, we've collected and we approved 15,000. Yeah. I'm not sure why there was such a. Well, we 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 we, um, we collected 50,165 through May 14th, so right. we've already exceeded the 50,000. So Time. Yep. yeah, uh, we just uh, we, we may have um, again when I when we're estimating these receipts, uh, balancing the budget. I don't go to every single. If I want to reduce 10,000 in, in charges for services, I don't go to each line item and reduce uh, a couple of bucks percentage wise. I would just take one of the large items and reduce it because the only thing that goes on our tax recap is the grand total. So, 
And the firebox fee, that's for every business and or a multi-unit dwelling. They're, they're required to have some sort of uh, firebox there, and the fire department's supposed to have a key, so if there is a fire, they're able to, to Or it's to go a alarm system of some sort. I'm sure the fire chief can answer that question better than I, but there's, a, the there's a fee for having a, uh, a hookup to the fire station. I believe that's what it is. I'll save that question for the fire chief. Thank you. Councilor Sumi. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, Mr. Ionello. How are you today? Great, thank you. Uh, going back to page uh, 13 in the general fund, uh, in state revenue you indicated <clears throat> FY14 was $168 million, recommended as $176 million. There's an $8 million difference there? Yes. Um, now, of that $176 million, the school aid is about 150, 151 million. If you look believe, over page it's, uh, it's 16, the school aid school aid is 150 million, uh, 598, which we have budget, but that's net of net of assessments. Right. The state revenues uh, will, um, and I don't have my cherry sheet with me. I don't think. Uh, but the, I might have written it down, but uh, there are cherry sheet, um, cherry, state revenues, if you will, and then there's also state uh, assessments. And uh, so we, we don't, we don't um, appropriate the assessments. So when we book the revenues, we book it net of the, uh, and particularly the Chapter 70 school aid, net of any of those uh, chapter uh, uh, charter reimbursements or charter uh, tuition reimbursements, uh, and that's about 20 million or so, or 13 million or so. So we booked the number net, but we did uh, the increase in state aid is primarily uh, Chapter 70 did go up about nine million last year. Yeah, so I'm looking at, at, yeah, about I'm looking nine at million. that uh, change uh, in revenue on page 13. It's 8.3 million. The majority of that is, I'm sorry, the total of 10 million 015 706 change in the general fund uh, revenues from 14 to 15? Yes. Eight million of that basically is due to school aid, is that correct? Yeah, it's primarily school aid. The, the uh, cherry sheet increase for the city side, uh, they, they increased the local estimated receipts, I think $475,000. So as far as, far as the, the city goes, the general fund in the city, it only increased by, by, a, couple, by a couple of million dollars. The revenue stream is only increased. Yeah, our revenue that. stream, we're only anticipating the 1.1 million or 1.2 million in, in tax revenue, additional tax in, revenue in, this year. In and then uh, a few other, uh, you know, miscellaneous revenues, uh, our local receipts, we call them, we refer to them, things that we control, charges or services, licenses, or permits, fines and forfeits. Right. Uh, and then the rest is state aid. Okay. Um, are we allowed to go to page 15 and 16? Um, we don't have. I will, I, does anyone have any questions in, uh, for licenses and permits on page 15? You had a question there, Mr. Tom? The only question I had was the building inspection fees. Mm -hmm. So you indicated a $75,000 increase. Uh, do we take into consideration at all in this um, building inspection fees, the possibility of this new ordinance that might be created? Did they estimate that in here at all? Uh, no, we did not. Okay. The same thing will hold true with the occupancy permits, right? It's not estimated in there either. No, we, the, the new program has not been estimated in this okay. budget. Now, the other question I have would be on page uh, 16, dealing with construction school projects. Yep. Uh, we've been receiving approximately $7, seven million for the, for the past several years on the school project. Now it's down to $5.5 million. Yes, there are, that? we get, uh, that's under the old uh, um, Mass School Building Authority. They reimburse, we, right. we used to borrow, when we built the school, they would actually uh, uh, subsidize our debt. Uh, they no longer do that. They just, uh, if we were to build a new school, we would just, as we constructed, they would give us our 90% or 80%, whatever we would get uh, for, as we pay the bills. But back then, they actually subsidized our debt. So there's four 
I believe there are four schools that still have debt on the um, on that old MSBA program. And one of them, I think it was the Breen School, fell off. It ended, and FY14 was our last payment, so the bonds have been paid off. So that's the 1.478 is the drop in uh, payment from the MSBA. Uh, so we, although we lost 1.4 million in revenue, the debt service dropped about 2 million because uh, they do, although they, uh, they, in general, we, they reimbursed us 90%. It may not have been, it was substantially less than 90% because of all the costs that aren't allowable. Okay. So the debt fell off 2 million and 1.4 million. Um, the city still made out the difference. So we, we uh, reduced, and you'll see that in the debt service, we reduced the debt expenditures of practically, approximately 2 million, but we lost uh, approximately 1.4 million in revenue. So we're still up about six, 700,000. Okay. And I see on the, the lottery in, in the Beano and Charity, that's from the state too. That's, uh, that's an estimated figure of 16 million? Uh, that's, the, uh, that's basically the local, est um, the local aid to the municipalities. We, that's the old terminology. I guess we just never tamed it. We just never changed it. It's now called uh, uh, unrestricted local aid. Okay, so is this just an estimate? Uh, that's up? per the cherry sheet, per the last uh, one that came off the Senate committee. Okay. On uh, May, I think it was May 10th. Okay. All right, thank you. Councilor, are there any additional questions here? Councilor, uh, I don't have a question on this one. At some point, I want to have a big question, maybe at the end of this uh, revenue section. Sure. Okay. Um, I do have a question in food <coughs> inspection fees. Um, I think it correlates to the meal tax. Uh, actual for this year so far is sixteen thousand uh, dollars. We approved forty thousand, but it seems that in fiscal year twelve and thirteen, we went over that. Um, is it like a quarterly receipt that we? I'd have to look and see if uh, you know if food permits expire on June first or something, and they get a. Maybe they get a bunch of money at the end of the year. Okay. I mean, they've only received sixteen thousand through May fourteenth. So there's, it's uh, I'd have to analyze the account, the specifics of the account, to see what happened in the prior two years, mm -hmm. or is is there uh, an error in posting the account? Uh, and maybe there's some with the thousands of uh, transactions we have in our books. It is possible we could have recorded this transaction to the wrong account. We rely on inspection and inspectional services to tell us if we make an accounting error, but uh, but I suspect it could be one of those because uh, food permit fees probably uh, are an annual food permit, mm -hmm. and they might collect them maybe <coughs> May or June is when most of their fees come in. Okay. Um, Councilors, any additional questions here? No. Um, I know we touched upon uh, state revenue a little bit. Any questions in state revenue? Page uh, 16. I just need to talk, I mean, there's, a, there's the elephant in the room, there's $8.2 million. Mm -hmm. so I, I think out of everything, that's the biggest, yes. mm -hmm. biggest increase. Yep. So someone's gotta say something about that. So I understand that it's, you know, we don't much to say it's a formula, so we get the money, right? So it's not like. Well, there's a couple components to that. The reason why it increased so uh, much larger this year was uh, because of the formula. Uh, the formula is based upon the, uh, property values and income of the community amongst other things. And the other major factor, uh, which accounts for probably almost half of it, uh, was there are additional 400 and some odd students. And each student um, you know, has a, a dollar value associated there too, about you know, eight to $12,000. So there was a, you know, a good chunk of our increase was because we had a higher student population. So of course we should get more state aid because uh, it is based on a per pupil, ba on a per pupil basis. And then there's the other factors I just mentioned that go into the formula. So on the big picture of this, and this is my editorial comment, is I don't know, as, as we start looking at developments in the city, and we're going through a bit of a boom right now with some of the apartment complexes at old mill sites, I'm thinking, obviously there's two in my district now, there's Museum Square in Washington Mills, then you have the Union Crossing, then you have the new place that the old, uh, the place where the fire was. Malden Mills, Malden Mills, thank you. Malden Mills. Um, then we have another place on Union Street as well that's about to do a rehab project. So all of a sudden, we're starting to get a huge influx 
of all these kinds of units in the city. And many of them are units that will have families in there. So we are going to see a, a spike, I think, a spike in some growth in our school system. And I'm just wondering if, if we're having this, tr this big concentration now and, and uh, increasing our population by adding, adding all these new units, are we going to be able, and it's a question for Mr. Riley and for us as policymakers, are we going to be able to take in a potential new spike in school age students in our public schools? And is this money going to be enough? Well, again, uh, for this year, you know, with an increase in school population, we did get an incre increase in state aid. Uh, I think uh, this conversation, I think, uh, is a larger converse conversation. I know we have had somewhat steady growth um, in discussions of the school department. They have in their, their student population has been increasing. I guess uh, maybe it was 10 or so years ago, maybe it kind of flattened out, but in the last 10 years, it has gone up uh, rateably each year. Uh, so the question posed uh, to the school department is, are we, are we exceeding our capacity? And although it's getting tight, we haven't exceeded it, is the answer from, uh, from, uh, from the school. But, but I think that would be a good question for the, uh, uh, the receiver or Mary Lou Bergeron. They could, add, add, they could answer it very well, I'm sure. Thank you, counselors. Another question. Uh, the $8.2 million, is that going to come straight into our school system or part of that money is going to go to the shadow school, the vocational school, because of an increase of student population? Well, the, the, uh, that, the, the Chapter 78 comes directly to the city of Lawrence, so uh, that's going to come to us. The, um, uh, the vocational school, GLTS, they also have received some state aid, uh, and you'll see that in their budget. Their budget increased a little bit because they have a a project that they're doing that the council approved last year for an HVAC improvement plus uh, some other things. Uh, and they, uh, but they did assess us the uh, um, required net school spending contribution that the city of Lawrence has to provide. So I think their, their uh, appropriation uh, request did go up um, a few hundred, 250,000 I think, maybe a little bit more. See it in the budget. So none of that money will go to the SS Aggie or SS Aggie is a separate uh, assessment. So each yes. one will get separate money. Yes. Okay. So this is totally for us. This is for us. Great. Great. Counselors, any additional questions here? <coughs> Counselor Toomey. Just one other question here. Um, as I look through this, I'm looking under um, on page uh, 16. Other intergovernmental revenues, parking violation fines. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with the monies that we get from the um, meters. This is something, is this something that the other uh, group that goes around in non metered areas and tickets? These are our, um, these are parking meter, parking violation fi fines outside those, uh, metered uh, outside the metered areas. Those are our traffic enforcement officers issuing tickets and us collecting it. We're doing a lot better with that than we are with the meter thing, right? Well, I mean, you know, there's, much, uh, there's only a uh, few streets that have the meters on there, but yes. Uh, have, have we met, um, have we ever gone over the, uh, the goal that was set in order to get additional revenues out of the meters? I think we just had that meeting with the counselors uh, uh, about a month ago or so, uh, at a subcommittee, the yeah. people from Standard Parking came in, is and the mean? estimate is for this year we're not going to exceed the 1.4 million. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be close to it, but um, uh, they, they, there's a you know if we put a second phase in uh, and put added more meters that might uh, put us over the top. There's a no, number of different things I'd like to see us do, but we've only completed phase one. There was initially supposed to be a phase two, and go out a little further, but. Uh, <coughs> It's a policy decision. Thank you. Why do we have two separate line items for parking fines? It's uh, 4774 and 47.75. Uh, I'm not sure what's in the other parking fines, but I suspect um, I'd have to look. It's a small number, mm -hmm. uh, but they, they may be. I don't know if those are handicapped. Uh, uh, ticket violations versus regular parking violations, I'm not sure. Okay. Counselors, any additional questions here? Just another comment real quick. Uh, nuisance fire alarms, one of the things that I learned very quickly 
uh, in talking with fire department officials is that many of the runs that they go on are from nuisance fire alarms. And if you take a look at, uh, if you look at their uh, weekly schedule of their uh, events or actions, a boatload of them are for fire alarms, nuisance fire alarms, smoke detectors just going off, you know, and things like that. So, and, and I know we have an ordinance uh, that's supposed to uh, tick off the repeat offenders. And uh, one of the things, at some point, someone needs to crack down on that and we don't we can reduce the number of false uh, these false fire alarms and we can use our firefighters when there's a true emergency not just when there's a, a false alarm so we need to at some point whether it's <coughs> you through the budget director saying we need to be more diligent in those fines or to the fire department itself putting the resources there which I think will benefit the fire department in the long run mm -hmm. uh, and frankly help us citizens out because we don't have fire department apparatus going to places where nothing's happening but save it for the real emergencies. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. I just want to, again, highlight that, put a little asterisk next to that, and see what we can do to try to improve um, on those um, on that enforcement. That's it. Okay. Um, Mr. Anello, interest income, is that money based on money that we have in, in bank account? Is that from our free cash account? Where, where's this interest This is uh, money sitting in our bank accounts. We don't receive uh, an awful lot of interest uh, because of the uh, low interest rates these days, but that's our, our estimate for interest income on, uh, on cash balances. Okay. And what is the miscellaneous revenue? Um, Miscellaneous revenue, I believe that 294,000 is. Uh, I was just thinking it was a grant reimbursement, but I don't think that's what that is. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. I have to take a look at the details, but there in uh, it may be. Um, I'll have to take a look, counselor, to okay. give you a, a specific breakdown. Sure. We'll have it for our next budget hearing tomorrow night. Sure, no problem. Um, kind of want to guess. Okay. Let's go on to the next page. So now we're on to uh, the parking fund. Page 29. Legend of Finance? Yeah. No, I mean uh, revenues. So page 17, oh. where's your... Revenue source for, for, or should we just wait and, I mean, we're talking about revenue tonight, so let's just get the revenue done. Whatever your pleasure. I mean, does anyone have any particular questions? I think that all this uh, are very straightforward. Yeah, so my, my question, this is this is the money that's coming from Museum Square, is $800,000, is that where this is? we're talking about here? Uh, this is the parking uh, enterprise fund uh, revenues, so it'd be the Buckley, the two parking garages and the lots, including, the surface lots. Including Museum Square? Yes, Museum Square, Buckley, and uh, seven or so surface lots. And I know there's been a lot of questions slash concerns, maybe even meetings. I'm, I'm interested in all the parking, but most specifically Museum Square is in my district now. So I'm concerned about what's happening there. Um, so I, I, I know that there is a, a boatload of issues with respect to the scaffolding around there. Maybe it's in the condition of the parking lot and fees that some people are paying or not paying. <coughs> are we getting a handle on what's happening with the, with the museum square parking? We've it seems actually like it, it been, seems like it's a mess. We've actually been in discussions with them uh, for the last uh, few months and uh, trying to come up with a plan, but there is a, uh, when the parking garage was was built, it was basically uh, built with some state funds involved uh, regarding the uh, uh, state funded the apartment, the Museum Square Apartments uh, uh, next door. So uh, along with that came a garage and they had some, because they put up some money towards the construction of that garage, um, there is no, they don't have to pay any rent for those parking spaces, but we're required to keep those parking spaces available for them so the residents have a place to park. But there's a, a number of different uh, issues with the both garages, but that one in particular uh, that we're looking at now, that we are trying to put a plan together for that. 
I would. I have a very parochial interest in that one. Mm -hmm. I like to be more involved. If you can keep me in the loop as to what's happening in that particular one, I would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. And when we're done with the revenues, I've just got a, a blanket question. Yeah. Any additional questions in uh, page 17 or 18? Okay, let's move on to page 19, uh, which is the Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund's revenue. Uh, I do have a question here, Mr. Anello. I see a decrease uh, of $481,000 for charges of services uh, for water and sewer charges. Are residents going to see a decrease in, in their water and sewer bill? Uh, no, we're just estimating the revenues conservatively to match what they need to spend. If you can look at their rev last year's revenues, actual was 17.4 million, and FY13 it was 17.9 uh, million. Uh, they probably are going to bring in 17 or 18 million, but uh, we just don't want to. Uh, um, uh, we're just showing enough revenue to cover what they plan on spending, okay. which is a lot less than that. They do have approximately a 10 million dollar retained earnings. Uh, they have an awful lot of uh, work, as John Asenzi has mentioned. Uh, we had two major uh, water improvement projects over the last few years of, of uh, 15.8 million and 24 million that was last year. Uh, and there's at least another 50 million. Uh, well, they're having a special study done now of needs for the sewer side. And it's estimated there's probably 50 million in need for that. So we're trying to um, reduce the expenses as much as possible, build up some reserves because we know we're going to be borrowing some more or placing some more debt burden and we don't want to increase the rates. Okay. Um, counselors, any questions? All right. So, Councilor Gaplan, sure. have your big question now. So I know that we're not taxing to the levy, correct, this year? That's been a decision? Correct. So had we a tax to the levy, how much money would we have looked at uh, receiving in the city? It, it was approximately 1.3 million. I'm not sure if I have the act. A million, closer to a million four, Bob says. So I, I know I did 1. the calculation. It was one point three something. So closer to one point four million. Okay. So to make up for that, if and I know that we're not making up completely because my understanding is that there's cuts through most of the city budget except for police and fire, where there was uh, an increase on both of those, correct? And I'm not sure uh, how that works. Pardon me. Schools. And, well, had school, a major. I, I'm putting schools aside because yeah. we can't deal with that here. Um, so, are we, so I'm trying to figure out where we're doing the offset. It can't be all offset by cuts. So some of the offset must be coming from, from revenues, other revenues, because I'm seeing we just went through them. $75,000 in new ones for licenses and permits, $75,000 increases for charges for services, 1.2 million. Maybe that's the big nut right there. We estimated, um, you know, if I, you know, our our, our tax levy where we, <coughs> we increased 1.1 million for new growth. Our, our, the other, you know, state aid I just indicated, you know, mainly went to the school department, but that increased a little bit. Uh, that's our, our biggest uh, revenue source, and that increased roughly nine million. The only other uh, thing that helps the general fund are what we call uh, local receipts, and it's licenses and permits, uh, motor vehicle excise tax, a uh, few items like that. Last year, we, uh, in our budget, we estimated conservatively those revenues at 11.6 million. Uh, this year, we're looking for uh, 12 point, <coughs> just a little under 12.2 million. We've collected uh, over, uh, we're almost, we're, we've collected 11.9 million I'm sorry, 11.6 million. Uh, so, yeah, wrong column. We've collected um, uh, this year. We expect to exceed the 12.2 million. So we're we're trying to keep our local estimated receipts still conservatively estimated, but um, but we are at, we are looking to increase our local estimated receipts about 600,000 from last year to this year, based on what was budgeted. So local receipts, so I'm trying to figure out the $1.4 million that we would have received, I'm trying to figure out where we're getting that money, $600,000 <coughs> in local receipts. That seems like almost half of it. It's part of it, and, and I did just, I did have last year's numbers, I thought I did. Uh, in FY13, we collected $12.5 million in local receipts, so we're still asking for an FY15 less than the actual in FY13. 
and somehow I don't know how he's going to do it, but I guess it is a balanced budget. So we balanced it. It's so uh, we've, cut, uh, we've cut most of the departments. We've increased police and fire. We're not raising tax to the levy. Cost of business goes up every year. We're not raising tax to the levy. It's amazing. Well, um, we did, as I just mentioned, we did save a few dollars on the uh, debt service fell off. So yeah. there's a, we saved a few dollars on our pension assessment by trying to, we plan on paying the assessment early. Um, you know, a, a number of different things that we've, we, we've done last year and we're continuing to do this Where's year. land sales in here? Land sales, they would, yeah, tech, yeah. Pardon me? It's not a local receipt, but they're, 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 they're delineated, the, the prior year amount still in here. It's is just the, not factored into the, the budget. Is the prior year in here? Land yeah, the prior sales? year is in where here. Where is that? So, Can you show me? Uh, I'm just looking uh, for where <coughs> it would be reported. That could be. That could be that miscellaneous revenue, but I'm looking for a line item. We don't have a lot of uh, of land sales. Hmm. I think it was like six hundred thousand dollars or a half a million, something like that. Seven hundred. Is that a so? I'm going to stall while you're, while you're looking. So, are we making the presumption here that we're that we're not going to be doing land sales for as a policy matter for the next fiscal year? Uh, no, I'm sure we. we they're, I'm sure we. They're not part of our local estimated receipts because uh, it goes. Um, these uh, taxes uh, in FY15, we're estimating this budget based on FY15's <coughs> tax levy, uh, and then we, we're going to spend to that uh, that levy pretty much. The, uh, but we do collect, nobody, every, not everybody pays their taxes in the same year. And then some uh, people become uh, tax deadbeats and we end up taking, may have to take their property for non-payment of taxes. And then some of that land uh, would, be, would be sold at, at auction or foreclosed on and we would, uh, um, Dan McCarthy comes to you for the council to sell the surplus property and, and recoup our tax uh, revenue. Uh, so it takes several years to do that. So, but, but since we already estimated those tax revenues in <coughs> FY15, for FY15's budget, we can't count those, uh, those uh, land sales as an estimated receipt. But it does come back into the uh, general fund and when we collect it in cash, and then we can, it'll count towards our free cash. Can, can I ask why we don't have a, a line item? That's a big nut. Mm -hmm. the, the, I'm sure the, the revenue, it's not a line item in the, uh, under the mayor's recommendation column, but you should see a line item, and if I can just find it, um, it might be. Um, I'm looking. I'm looking under the taxes and excise section. That's where I suspected it would be. I don't see. Well, I've got the mic. So uh, payment in lieu of taxes, there are some people or, or companies are doing payment in lieu of taxes. I think we talked about that, didn't we, Mr. Vega? I think, we, I think you gave us a spreadsheet on that, right? There was a spreadsheet point. that uh, I've seen that. was discussed for that. And that usually does come in at the very end of the year, so it might look like they haven't come in, but we uh, get those payment in lieu of taxes mostly at the in June. All right, but if we can't find it, I know that we got a, we got a busy night ahead of us. Uh, if you. I'll a, probably it's find not it on before here. the end of the Pardon night. Me? I'll probably find it before the end of the night. That's fine. I'll, that's fine. If the, if the chairman will, will let me come back to it, sure. we, can, we can stop it right here sure. on that question. All right. Any additional questions here on revenues? All right. So, yeah, councilors, um, one last question? Uh, it's really not to do with It's more along with what Councilor um, what Plant's talking <coughs> about. Um, the normal procedure that we do when we arrive at a tax rate is to take the levy limit from the previous year, increase it by 2.5% and then the new growth, come up with a new number. Mm -hmm. And then that number uh, is what the city has to raise in the way of taxes. And it's split between residential and business. And that's based on the tax factor, okay? The tax factor for this past year was very favorable to businesses and not so much to residential. So. But that's the tax rate. Now, is that going to, uh, Mr. Ionello? Yes. We're going to proceed with the same prop, uh, same procedure, right? We're going to take a, 
The levy limit of last year, ordinarily we would increase that by 2.5%, which right. we're not doing, and you're going to add new growth and come, right. up, with, come up with a new number. So right. what's, what's to ensure, as far as the people who live here, that this tax rate is not going to increase? Uh, the tax rate will increase to accommodate the new growth, but, uh, but it won't, won't have increased as much as they norm we normally would have. So there is going to be Every a year we have new growth. Last year we estimated yes, 1.1 million and we did the same this year. So there is going to be a tax increase. It very likely could be a tax increase. There could be a slight tax increase to accommodate for the new okay. growth. Uh, and again, too, that tax increase would depend upon how the council des desires to uh, adjust the tax factor one way or another. That's correct. Okay. And then the value of each individual personal property owner goes up and down but the Based levy as a whole can only go up the 1.1 million. Yeah. Mm. But I think that it would be a good idea if we could get some some kind of notification in the paper that because people look at their look at their tax bill, mm -hmm. okay, and they, a lot of them will question, well, how come my tax bill went up when the tax rate went down? And it's basically due to assess va assess value. That's right. A lot of people don't know that. They yeah. just look at the total. I know it's a common misconception. We discuss it. Uh, the the assessors bring it up every year at the council, reviewing the tax rate to make sure the public understands. Uh, I don't know how. Uh, it's just a misconception in the public. But but uh, can we do a better get get uh, the Eagle Tribune to do a nice article about it to explain it? Perhaps maybe we we'll get some free press. Uh, if, if we can ask our our esteemed <clears throat> reporter to help us out uh, when it comes close to December. Well, one uh, of to write things. an article about that, but that is uh, <clears throat> tax bills are going to go up and down. Even if even if the tax rate drops, your tax bill could go up if the sales in your area and the other factors that the assessors use mm. increase your property value. Because oh, part of Prop that. Two and a Half was to get all property value as close to 100% fair market value as possible, so everybody's fairly assessed. Uh, prior to Two and a Half, it was unfair. Now, one other question in reference to. Uh, I know the state has almost required us to go to the levy limit over a number of years. These past few years, past several years, have required us. Um, is there any possibility that because we're not going to the levy limit this time that there, there could be a, a slap on the wrist and, and a lower in the state aid? Well, I, uh, I don't think the, uh, obviously it's, a, you know, I'll ask the receiver to, uh, or the overseer to talk about that, but the, the you know, we did, um, you know, not going up to the full levy limit is a concern for the rating agencies. Um, I think we did a good job explaining, you know, we have a plan in place to, uh, to balance this budget. We still will balance it using conservative receipts and, uh, uh, and limited use of one-time resources. We're trying to be very, uh, very um, responsible. Uh, and we think we can accomplish it. And now that the budget is finally completed, we have accomplished it. We were able to balance this budget. Uh, yes, there are some departments that uh, uh, may have taken have to take a hit on some of their departments, but nobody's getting laid off. There are no layoffs in this budget. We're we, um, uh, you know, through better management and uh, and and being conservative and and responsible. I think uh, we were able to accomplish uh, the mayor's goal, which was to uh, not go not increase tax bills this year. And thankfully to new growth, it did remain the same as last year. So 1.1 million um, is certainly a big help. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Wonderful. All right, counselors, let's move on to, um, I know the fiscal overseers here. He has about an hour and a half drive home. So uh, I will suggest we take him first. Uh, fiscal overseer, uh, page 75. Mr. Nunes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Budget is level funded, no changes. Okay. When are you letting people, the public to speak? Is that at the end of the morning? When is that? Um, I'm just curious. I think if anyone has any questions at any particular time when we're discussing any any department. Okay. Because um, if we allow them to speak maybe at the beginning, then there might be a question that they may have. Later on, in a, in a very specific department, they might not have the opportunity. So I think that as he comes, uh, you know, people should signal me, and depending on, on how it looks like, then I'll, I'll let them speak. But for a limited time. Okay. I have one more. I've got one question for Mr. Nunes. 
Yes. How many more years, Mr. Nunes, will we be seeing you here before us? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask that question. <laughs> yeah, that's still undetermined. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, be, I believe that I asked you the question before when you made your presentation as yes. to who makes the final determination yeah. for would, you to stay or go. Yeah, it would be the Secretary of Administration and Finance. Okay. okay. Secretary Shaw, Clinton. So Just for the record, um, I endorse the budget mm -hmm. that the mayor has presented. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hampton. Um, <laughs> for people that might not have a copy of the budget in their hands, um, the fiscal overseer's budget uh, has professional service. Uh, $20,000 on other charges and expenditure, which is specifically for in-state travel. It's uh, $3,500 for uh, a total of $23,500. Counselors, have any questions on, on this department? Okay. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, so let's move on to uh, Budget and Finance, page 29. So the, the Budget and Finance is, um, it's sort of like an umbrella for different departments, which is the Office of Budget and Finance, the Comptroller's Office, Purchasing Office, IT Assessors, Treasures, and Tax Collector. Um, at this moment, I think that we should discuss page 30, which is specifically the Office of Budget and Finance. Um, and then we'll just continue. Um, Mr. Arnello, I see that the Office of Budget and Finance is gonna be saving us Fifty-nine thousand, almost sixty thousand uh, dollars, based on the mayor's recommendation. Uh, last year we approved two hundred and six thousand. So far we've we've spent one hundred and ten thousand um, dollars. Is there anything else that you would like to add? No. Yeah, there's not. The, the uh, just the thing to point out is on the professional services they. There's a decrease in professional services uh, because of there was a, uh, out of my budget came a, um, we paid for payroll service for the school department. Can't explain why, but it's just a long history of it. And last year was the first year the school department took that uh, payment over. Mm -hmm. We convinced them to, to take that payment over. So this year I'm asking for 14,000 uh, to remain in the account uh, to pay for uh, some outside um, uh, help uh, to get rid of a couple of management comments. There's two management comments related to, to for the city that I'd like to get rid of. One was doing a risk assessment, a fraud risk assessment of the city, uh, and another is to hire an internal auditor. Well, neither of those are quite palatable to the city of Lawrence. However, uh, we could, uh, if we, we could not hire somebody, but we could hire a consultant, a CPA, something like that, to do a fraud risk assessment and or maybe even do a little, uh, maybe there's an internal audit we can have somebody do uh, uh, instead of hiring an internal audit staff. Um, but that is an auditor, a Powers and Sullivan outside auditor recommendation as some of the councils may remember. So uh, so the mayor was a, did allow me to leave at least something in there to accomplish uh, a couple of those goals and make a few of our management comments go away, which certainly helps with uh, uh, with our rating, uh, ratings agencies would like to see those, our, our management comments, uh, see progress made in our management comments. Okay. Um, counselors, any questions here? And by the way, I'm the only employee of the budget finance department, so that's just me. Yes. <laughs> uh, although my salary is, uh, is high to, uh, for some people think it's quite high. It ha I haven't asked for an increase since I've been here, so. There's no increase for me. The other non-bargaining received a raise. I didn't ask for one. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to uh, the controller's office, page 32. In the controller's office, we're seeing approximately $18,000 in savings. Uh, last year, we approved $420,000. This year, the mayor's recommending $401,000, $402,000. 
Um, the majority of the saving is coming from the personnel uh, services. Um, Mr. Anello, I wanted to ask you in regards to uh, uh, personal services, this is something that I see in mostly every department, which is provision for salary and position adjustment. Um, could you please explain to us specifically what that means? Yeah, so last year, if you, if you recall, uh, we, um, we were in negotiations with many of the unions. Some unions settled, some unions didn't, but we were in negotiations. And so we, uh, assuming the, uh, the unions would settle or if they could settle, we had to put something in the, uh, in the departments who had unions who had not settled, uh, something in there in case, in case we did settle with the union. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to have to come back to the council for an additional appropriation. We factored it into last year's budget. Uh, this year's budget, um, you know, it's not in there. Um, so there are some departments uh, who uh, uh, some members uh, earn a lot of uh, the police, fire, uh, library, and I think inspectional services did settle. Uh, the clerical union, the supervisors union, a few others did not settle. Um, and the non-bargaining uh, employees did receive an increase last year. Uh, so those are the only ones you'll see a, an increase from last year to this year, probably the um, for most of the city hall employees, if you will. Uh, it'll be a non, only non-bargaining employees had an increase. Mm -hmm. uh, but they did go like five years without an increase while were, all the unions did get an increase. So. Um, Mayor Lantigua last fall did try and make, provide some equity there, but they still didn't get much. Okay. Um, Councilors, are there any additional questions on the Comptroller's Office? Okay. Councilor Tumi, you had a question? No? No? I, I'm sorry, where are you? <laughs> the Comptroller's Office? Which one? Uh, page, page 33. 33. Oh, the Comptroller. Okay, let's move on to page 34, which is um, uh, purchasing office. In the purchasing office, last year we approved $147,000. Uh, this year the mayor's recommending $139,000, which will give us a saving of approximately $8,000. Um, again, the majority of the savings is coming from uh, provision for salary and position adjustment, as Mr. Anello just explained in the previous office. Um, Councillors, are there any questions in this department? Councillor LaPlante. How come there's no vacation monies? That's a question for me. Oh, that's vac there's a, that, uh, everybody gets a vacation. That's vacation, uh, I think it's shortened uh, to vacation, but it's vacation buyback and some of the union agreements, employees, if they have uh, excess time, can choose to um, uh, get one week in additional <coughs> pay instead of taking the vacation. And it's problematic for the city because we budget for 52.2 weeks and, uh, and then all of a sudden somebody wants an extra week's pay, we don't have a budget. So that was a mechanism to try and budget for <coughs> someone who wanted to get that extra pay. Uh, but we really would prefer people to take their time off and not ask taxpayers to pay people 53 weeks uh, in a 52 week year. So that contractual or? or you uh, yeah, it's generally contractual, yes. Um, uh, so, so we're, you know, but there, even though it's contractual, if we were trying to ask managers to have, have their employees use their vacation time and space it out over the course of the year so they don't have any uh, excess at the end of the year. But contractually, if they do have some time and they, <coughs> you know, uh, there, there, there's an issue there, we may have to pay out some vacation buyback. So. We've asked most most department heads not to do it, so we don't have any vacation buyback uh, planned in the purchasing department. Any additional questions, counselors? Um, purchase of services, Mr. Arnello. Um, in advertising, we have spent so far eight thousand nine thousand um, dollars. We're requesting the same amount, twelve fifty. Yeah, last year we spent twelve uh, three, um, tw uh, twelve thousand three hundred thirteen, and even though we only spent eight thousand nine hundred forty one, this is the time of year where we do a lot of advertising. The school department has a lot of end of year uh, uh, bids that go out in anticipation of the start of the school year. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, twelve thousand five hundred um, is what we're requesting. 
and Rita Brousseau, the purchasing agent, would like to see us increase a little bit, but she thinks she can make it go with the uh, 12500 Okay. And how about uh, employee training? I see that so far we've only spent $25 on we're requesting $2,000 last um, year. In, in, uh, in FY14, we did send um, uh, one of the, um, one of the uh, Rita Brousseau has an annual training she has to take for maintaining her mass uh, uh, certified uh, purchasing professional certificate from the state, whatever that, whatever that acronym is. And also, uh, we've had uh, Mary Goulet, the, uh, the uh, account clerk in the office, also go through that course. And they, although the inspector general's office puts it on, uh, they <clears throat> charge us a tuition for that. And it's quite expensive. So uh, for those two employees, we do expect them to continue their continuing education to keep their certificates up. And also, in case we need something for... Um, uh, to send someone else on some training. We'll have a little something in their budget if she has trouble and uh, with procurement, procurement issues. Okay. Um, in personal services, I see stipend. We haven't spent anything, even though we've approved in, in le the last fiscal year? No, the stipend is uh, to the purchasing agent by contract, and it is paid to her. Okay. So it will be paid by the end of the fiscal year? It, it, it's paid weekly. I think they just didn't charge that line item. I think you'll, uh, you can see the, um, we'll make sure that's uh, corrected uh, before the end of the year. But if you look at the uh, actual through May 14th, mm -hmm. there's $100,396. If you, if you look at, they don't have a vacancy, so if you look that out, they would overexpend that line item mm. without that, uh, without, by, because they didn't charge the stipend line item. Okay. Counselors, have any questions here? So let's move on to the IT department, page 36. Um, information technology. Last year we approved $881,546. This year the mayor is recommending $858,996. Uh, for a saving of $22,550. Uh, we're not adding any new employees here. And the majority of the, the savings is gonna be coming from uh, purchase of services, even though there's a small increase in supplies. I know we have the director of uh, IT here. Yeah, the IT director is here to answer any specific questions, but we did, uh, there are some, uh, again, some things we'd like to like to purchase for the IT department, computers and so forth, but um, you know, and there are, and I did preserve uh, his budget as much as possible and, and cut some other areas in my division. Uh, but there are, um, um, uh, this budget pays for the software, our Munis uh, ERP system, uh, the, the, the accounting and, and uh, payroll system and so forth is paid out of, uh, out of this budget for the entire city. Uh, so there's a uh, software maintenance fees uh, that we have to pay annually. That's included in this budget. And, and then also Rob's office is uh, in charge of repairing uh, computers and screens and everything and updating the network and all that kind of stuff. So there are, um, uh, there are line items in here we, we'd hope that would not get cut um, any further because uh, it really is the IT is the engine that uh, drives the city. I do see um, on the purchase of services, um, other purchase services, there's uh, an increase of $84,000 there. Um, what specifically is this amount for? I believe we reduced <coughs> the line item above for telephone and fax. Is that the, Rob? Yes. Oh, the new cost of Microsoft. Go ahead, Rob. Uh, Microsoft has changed how they do their licensing model under state contract. Um, so it's now our yearly subscription fee that's um, 115, 100, almost 116 a year um, and through other savings in that line item and in that group in general, we've uh, managed to do that and still be compliant with the legal requirements of running Microsoft products. Hmm. Okay, are there any questions there, Councilors? Councilor LaPlante. So it's rare that we have a chance to see you here, Rob, and welcome, and thank you thank for you. your help that you provided uh, to me, me, perhaps others as well, when IT issues come along. Um, 
Is there any kind of firewall or code of ethics or any kind of protections between the administrate the, the mayor's office I and mean, the executive branch and the legislative branch? I mean, does the IT department clearly you have an ability to go into if you wanted to? I'm presuming into city council's uh, work product, right? Yes. And so, is there any kind of um, is there any kind of, of uh, what's the right word I'm looking for? Policy or um, code yep. that talks about how and when and, and et cetera, that if you go into it, because we want to keep both branches separate. I mean, mm -hmm. we don't want to know what the mayor's doing. We can't say, hey, Rob, can you tell us what's going on in the mayor's office? And you go, oh, yeah, well, he's in this field of this person <laughs> and that. I mean, you wouldn't be able to do that. And I'm going to presume that you can't do the same thing in our direction. Right. So if someone asks for access into someone else's file, if that person's a current employee of the city, we verify with them that it's okay first. Um, if they're no longer an employee, we verify with the department head of that department if it's okay to give that person access to the other person's files. Okay. So um, am I to presume that in the last, this year included, in the last few years, that there's been no request to That's go correct. into city councilor files at all for any reason? No, no one's asked to access any of the council files. Got my reasons to ask. <laughs> any, any additional questions, councilors? I do. Councilor Aquino. On the purchase of services, telephones, and fax? Yes. There is a decrease in the Yes. Um, so we're talking telephone teletype fax. Uh, what, it, what makes up the decrease there? Yes. Um, over the years, telephone, how the calls get made, have evolved. Um, and you know, by competitive bidding, we've realized those savings and have been able to cut our phone bill. That's a huge statement. Let me, let me, are you, are you yes. yeah. Councilor mm -hmm. President. On the uh, telephone, on the last same item, the telephone, teletype, fax, et cetera, um, we have a contract with a telephone company on a certain number of, of telephones? Um, the way we do our main phone system, we bring all of our calls into our central location, uh -huh. and that's a certain number of lines, but then we distribute them to all the actual phones you see on the desk which is a much more significant number. Um, we actually have only 46 telephone lines that come in for the entire city, okay. but they split up among all the phones. Wow. How about the cell phones that, are, that some counselors or other employees use? Mm -hmm. How does that, uh, how does that uh, reflect expenditures on, on this line item? Um, that is 62,400. And that doesn't change regardless of the number of, of phones that we have? Um, it does vary. Um, you know, it's based on overages on number of minutes, number of phones we have, number of devices we have. Okay, so, so it's it, a, it does vary. It's yeah. a variable bill, but it's about 5,200 a month. Okay. Has any, has any research been done in terms of lines that are not being used, for example, I had a telephone line back in 2010, 2011, that is still open. Yep. And when somebody calls that telephone line, uh, my, vo my recorder voice still answers, even though I'm not using that, that, that service. So all of our minutes are pooled across the whole account. Mm -hmm. So it's often cheaper to pay for an additional device to get the additional minutes, even if it's not being used to avoid the overages in okay. going over in minutes. So it doesn't affect us in terms of cost? It's, it affects it, but it's the most cost effective solution. Okay. okay. And we look at the phone bill pretty regularly to see, you know, where we, what we need, what we don't need. Okay. <coughs> All set? That's it. Yep. Councilor LaPlante? Councilor President, did you say the city councilors have phones? Huh? Did you say the city councilors have phones? I used to have one two, uh, back in 2010, 2011. That the city's paying for? Yeah. We got all for one, yeah. I'm sorry. Everyone used to have one. Well, I didn't you never got one at that time? No. 
Yeah, we were all uh, when I when I joined the council. Yeah, it was it was offered to uh, to all the councilors. Cell phones. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Blackberries. Right here. Pardon? Huh? You got one. <laughs> yeah. He has one. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And I chose not to use mine at that time. I returned it. So. I yeah, mean, I chose that, not. That's each councilor's prerogative. Oh, okay. So you might uh, since it's not going to cost the city additional money. No, I'm all set. You might I, I, was, I was surprised to know that, that those were offered. <laughs> you guys still can have one if you want. So I'm, 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 see what happens <laughs> when you miss a meeting? I give you mine. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, Any I don't want to take your phone calls. <laughs> I don't use <laughs> Any additional questions, counselors? <clears throat> now, um, supplies, office supplies. I see that there's a, a small <clears throat> increase. Yep. Um, so in the past, we've been purchasing toner out of line items that weren't really applicable to toner. Mm. And this year, we're budgeting in that line item so we can report on it better. Uh, do we recycle all cartridges? Yes. And do we get any revenue out of that? No. no? Um, they're just empty recyclables. It's the toners for copiers are really just kind of a soda bottle. Mm full of the toner. There's no usable parts like a drum that you'd have on a smaller printer. Uh, and how about operating supplies? I see that it remains the same, yet it doesn't seem like we will be spending that. Um, in the past, we've kind of spent operating supplies both out of repairs and maintenance, the 5240, which uh, was supposed to be for building uh, repairs and maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually asked for more <coughs> than the 50 in the um, operating supplies, but to keep the uh, budget balanced, you know, we kind of combined the 5240 and the 5425 lines, mm. but still kept it underfunded. So you're, ba you're combining 5240 from purchase on, and services with 5425, okay. And then we were able to cut 30 out of that. I see, I see. Just for information, uh, counselors, um, we're going to receive a tablet uh, instead of the amount of paper that we normally get for the meetings. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be saving money on the waste, on that much paper that we, that we waste uh, mm -hmm. on every meeting. And uh, he's gonna, uh, the IT department is going to be providing us with a... Uh, training and an overview on how to use the tablets. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully that we're going to be doing that very soon. When we have the uh, committee as a whole, we're going to, uh, 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 the IT department is going to come and give us a, a, a small review on how to use the tablet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and from there on, we're going to be able to save, I think, a great deal of money not only on the paper, but also we, we're going to be able to go back and forth uh, on every document that is, that is, put, that is placed in the tablet. Mm -hmm. So that's going to, it's going to make a, a big difference. If you recall, uh, two years ago, we, we were going to do that before the IT department got into, into trouble. So, um, so it's been my intention all along to really catch up on that and, and, and bring us up to date. So hopefully uh, mm -hmm. within a short period of time, we're going to be able to do that. So that'll be at the new fiscal year? Huh? In the new fiscal year? No, before the end of the fiscal year. Am I correct? Before yes. the end. Because the tablet is going to be purchased out of the IT department out of, out of money that they have uh, currently. So we're, they're going to be- Do we have a scheduled meeting for the committee on the whole? Uh, no, we're going to decide that on, on Tuesday. Oh, okay. And what kind of tablet are we getting? Uh, Rob can probably um, give us. Basically, it will be a, um, we haven't decided on any specific brand yet. We're going to go for the largest screen possible just because there is a lot of information. That largest we, screen, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Largest um, screen at the cheapest possible right. cost. So <laughs> <laughs> is that, is um, we're looking at goes? about a 12 inch display. What's that? 12 we're inch? looking at about a 12 inch display. Mm -hmm. Does Apple make one of those? No. But it's definitely going to help us tremendously in, in becoming more efficient ourselves. Uh, less 
again, less waste of paper, less waste of time, because the, uh, the city clerk and, and our secretary uh, uh, spends a tremendous amount of time right. making, making copies. Uh, so uh, again, we, uh, I expect that we're gonna save some money and time that can be used by our clerk in other areas. All right. So we old bucks got to learn to do it all over again. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much, Council President. I, I, I applaud that initiative. Thank you. Yeah, great job. Um, any additional questions here? Just the, um, Mr. President. Yeah. These uh, salary increases, uh, those are contractual. The, the salary increases last year or for the, uh, this department is all non-bargaining, so they've received a non-bargaining increase from, from the mayor last <coughs> fall, as all non-bargaining employees did. Okay, now what is that uh, provision for salary and positions adjustment there? Last year, that was the provision to give everybody a, uh, an increase last year because we didn't have it, uh, the contracts weren't settled. So in most departments, we had a uh, I just created a line item salary and position adjustment in case somebody settled a contract, we'd have money in the budget to pay for it. Oh, okay. Any additional question, counselors? Okay. Thank you very, very much. We're going to move on to um, the assessor's office, page 38. So in the assessor's office last year, we approved $266,000. Uh, the mayor is recommending $255,000, which will give us a saving of approximately $11,000. Um, currently, there's four employees, and there will be no changes. Um, Mr. Arnello. I think we have Alex here to answer any specific questions. I'm just looking for uh, my details. But the only thing that's uh, in this... Oh, this is the operating budget. I'm sorry, I was looking for something else. Uh, but in this budget here, um, again, the employees have uh, uh, have not received a pay increase. There is a salary. There was a salary and position adjustment last year. It's not there this year. Uh, and the budget uh, for uh, for the assessor's office is fairly modest. If you notice the employee training line item, we do have three assessors now, and each of the three assessors need to. Uh, have continuing education. Uh, so that's what that line of generally is. And uh, just as much to talk about in this budget, it's pretty bare bones. Okay. Councilors, have any questions? When was the last time Councilors. there was a pay increase for the assessors? I believe it was. Uh, it hasn't been in, uh, it's been over two years, right? Yeah. So it must have been three years ago. Uh, FY10 or FY11? FY11, they might have had an increase. So they have gone without an increase for 12, 13, and 14 so when, far. When do you anticipate that we're going? I mean, you just can't keep people <coughs> up. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, part of the negotiations, but I know there's negotiations with all the union contracts that have expired. Are they part of a union? Uh, yes, they are. Which union? Um, supervi supervisors union. It's an SEIU union. SEIU dash supervisors. They go by a number of different. I'm sure, it has local 888 or something like that. Specifically. Yeah. So this uh, this line item here under uh, provisions for salary. That's the same thing. Eleven thousand seven hundred six dollars. Just gonna look my details here. On page uh, 39. Okay, so that's the salary and position adjustment that was there last year. It's not there this year. Councilor Plant again. I just want to make one more quick comment, only because it's not often times for us to say this. I want to publicly thank um, Alexi Vega, as the chair of the assessors department, for all the good work. Uh, he's responsive. He gets good information out in a timely manner. Um, and I, I, as a councilor, can't be more pleased. Uh, work his work product and responsiveness to every time I make a phone call and he gets it to me. So as his supervisor, I want you to know that. I appreciate that and uh, and he is an excellent employee. He deserves a raise. Sure, he sure does. <laughs> he sure does. Will you take that into consideration? <laughs> no, I'll certainly uh, well, make my case. Boss, I thought, I thought I'd throw that out. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay, counselors, are there any additional questions? Mr. Vega, thank you very much for being here tonight. All right, so now we're gonna move on to... There's just one more page in the assessor's... Uh, yes. It's the revaluation page. page. Uh, that's a contract with RRC who does, uh, uh, goes out on all the site visits and uh, to assess the properties. Mm -hmm. And there's a decrease there. We've asked the vendor to see if, if they could help us out this year by giving us a little bit of a break since we aren't going up with, uh, with taxes. Um, and because uh, he has a three-year contract and he the vendor did work with us and uh, and agreed to decrease uh, his line item this year five thousand and you know over the next few years he'll get it back but it, so it won't really be uh, um, it's it, we're, it's not going to cost us any more than it did in the in, in prior to the contract negotiation so uh, we want to thank the vendor for working with us to help us out this year and we'll make it up to him next year and the year following Uh, now, any questions there? No. Moving on to the treasurer's office, page uh, 41. Uh, last year, we approved $369,000, $636. This year, the mayor is recommending $345,567, which will save us $24,000. Um, Currently, there's 4.5 employees, meaning there's four full-time and one part-time employee? Well, it's not a part-time employee. We just take, uh, there's a, a, a treasury division and a collector's division. Oh, yes, uh, I So I took half of the treasurer and assigned them to each because it is one, <coughs> one position. Yep. Um, that position right now, I hold that position uh, in addition to my a finance director, I don't get paid for it. Uh, it's not an extra salary. I've just appointed myself until I can fill the position uh, so there's a, uh, that salary will be split among the two divisions when it's filled. Okay, yes, I remember that. Last year was the same scenario, yes. I believe, yeah. Um, Councillor, have any questions here? I forgot one question. Councillor LaPlante. Out of all the cuts that are taking place in this department, which is the most painful? Um, the, overall, the uh, cuts are very mild because uh, again, I, when I look at this division, it's the collector and the treasurer. And between the two divisions, it's very little impact. Um, uh, I think you, you notice some line items here, uh, in particularly for, for banking services. Um, we've reduced uh, the banking services this year because we've, some of the expenses that were paid out of that line item were for the collector side. So I've increased uh, some of the line items on the collector side of the budget. So overall, it's a it's pretty much a level funded budget. Um, it, it, it seems. Um, are you finished, Councilor Lapanch? Yes. Okay. It seems as in for banking services, mm -hmm. every year we roughly spend the same amount. I'm I'm expecting that we haven't received anything for this fiscal year yet because it's only seventeen thousand. Are you understanding where I'm going? To? For banking services, yeah, I so didn't quite hear your question, but uh, 2012 we spent 21,000. Yep. 2013, 21,000. This year so far, has been 17 dollars. But I think that well, then we haven't yet yeah, paid the yeah we haven't that's received a settlement. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we're asking for 28 thousand we'll, dollars. if we if we make an additional small cut there to make it more uh, reasonable and and see more like what the previous year has looked like. How, how will that affect it? Well, we, the banking services are expected to go up a little bit. There's one of the things that they've, uh, the bank, uh, uh, most of our, our money is with, our banking services are generally provided by Bank of America. We do all our checking and payroll and, and uh, accounts are there. And one of the things that we have is we require all our funds to be fully insured. Mm. And there's a, a movement afoot to charge us more for that. Um, and, and I don't, uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't want to, uh, risk the city's money and not have it uh, fully insured. Uh, but, you know, of course, if we were willing to do that, we would, uh, our banking services would cost us a little less. Um, but at least at this point, I'm willing to pay a little bit more for it to have that assurance. Although Bank of America is a big bank, uh, no bank is too big to fail, and uh, I just don't want to put the city's uh, money at risk. Mm. Um, and also in employing training, I, you know, we've, 
have zero dollars spent and we're asking for an extra almost a thousand nine hundred and five dollars you know again with with uh, much of the training in the uh, uh, for all of the city departments I've tried to put some money in uh, certain pockets I have a little bit of money in, in training in the IT department I think you may have noticed I have a little bit of money obviously in the assessor's office the purchasing department and there's a little bit of money in here too also because the treasurer collector treasurer when they come on board uh, is and I is going to have to go to the collector <coughs> treasurer school that does cost money uh, I do want to have them certified there is a certification program I'd like them to go through so mm. I would like to have money in my budget to, to send the new treasurer to the collector uh, treasurer school okay. counselors any additional questions here okay let's move on to um, on the next page on page 42, you're page 42? Yeah, we're on page 41, 42. Yeah, just I know, um, <laughs> under the column change, it shows a $7,400 savings, uh, $7,400 in, in increase, but those numbers don't add up. Hmm. When you add them up. Well, it's an increase, went from 22,000 222,801 to 230,271. Right. Are you that, saying the math is incorrect? That adds, that adds up. Okay, but, yep. But when you go under the change column and you add up those numbers that are there, the 196 plus $20,000 negative, $9,000 negative, $3,000 well, negative. Well, 20,000 is a positive. 20,000 is hmm? a positive. That's a, 20,000 is a positive change. So it's it's 196 plus 20 minus 9200 minus 3500 plus 200 a, minus be, 120. Council's right. It should be a reduction of 20,000. If you look at parentheses. The, no, but it's a negative. It went from a negative to zero, so that's a positive change. Why, why was it? There was a provision for uh, uncompensated absences because the treasurer's position was unfilled. So I put an, I subtracted. Oh, I, oh. I already oh. Yeah, uh, I okay. reduced the treasurer's budget by twenty thousand last year. Do you understand? This year, I plan on filling it by July one, so hopefully, uh, we won't have a an empty position. But if I did, I would also uh, put a little uh, provision for uncompensated absences, if you will, and subtract uh, the amount from the budget. Yep. So it looks a little funny, but it does. Ne negative, negative. Uh, Any additional questions? All right, so let's move on to uh, the tax collector's office. We have um, fiscal year 2014. Uh, this was actually a new office as of last year, uh, as of this fiscal year. I mean. um, we approved $289,000, $589. The mayor's recommendation is uh, $280,730, which will save us eight thousand eight hundred and fifty nine dollars um, are there any questions here counselors between page 43 44 there's one one brief question Counselor is, this is back to the treasurer's for just a real quick section I'm sorry I, I've yet to meet the treasurer uh, uh, Robbie that's on my fault uh, is does she ever as a department had come before she doesn't come before the council at all you kind of take that response. I'm the treasurer Treasurer and collector. But don't we don't we have a treasurer in the? I thought we have a treasurer. No, that that's I'm the acting treasurer. The I did have John Peak as a treasurer, but I made him the comptroller a couple of months ago. Oh, okay, that's what I'm talking about. And I moved him to the comptroller's position. Uh, he's got a very strong accounting background, and um, I need him up in the tr collect in the comptroller's office more than the treasury. Either. All right. And anyway, thank you. Any questions? It's not even a question. It's more of a comment. Um, my to-do list. Director Anello, um, besides salary and wages, the, the biggest item there is printing and mailing with $61,000, $61,500. Um, so far we spent $30,000 here. Are we looking to get another bill? There is another 30000 and uh, uh, this is the line item where we uh, use our deputy tax collector. There's a couple of uh, requisitions a couple of bills waiting for the mayor's approval during the spending freeze I've got to ask him to pay those uh, because they they've already incurred those expenses but though they send demand fees and uh, uh, they mail our tax bills and they also 
uh, do the demands for delinquent taxpayers for excise and for real and personal property. Okay. Uh, so there, are, there is, uh, I think it's, it's over 37,000, I think, in bills that are outstanding. And, and how about um, on the other charges and expenditure? Property casualty insurance, are we looking to, to get a bill for that? Uh, that is the, that's just insurance for the, uh, uh, for the department, and there's also some uh, insurance under the treasury side. And do we have a bill for this fiscal year? Uh, yes, I think. Uh, I have to look and see where it was charged, but I believe it's paid. I know it's an annual <coughs> bill, unless it unless it just hasn't hit the account yet. That could be one. I remember that being held up by the mayor, but I'll take a look. Okay, if it, if it has it's an been, annual bill, if it has been paid, will you mind uh, letting us know that it has been paid, and if it will be paid by the same. Uh, account next year and if so maybe we should remove it from here if it will be paid from another account yeah, I'll uh, maybe tomorrow night I'll I'll be here tomorrow night I can let you know it hasn't been paid mm, it's, next year. it's next year second year Just one time one time okay thank you thank you okay. council does any additional questions here does this um on page uh, 44, page the, treasurer, the treasurer tax collector is a half person there. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. On page 44, on the treasurer tax collector is a half a person, 0. 0.5. Yes. So I, I have one, one half of the salary for the collector treasurer is on the collector's budget, and the other half of is under the treasurer's budget. So if we go back to page 42, page 42 and 44 each have um, half oh, a I treasure see. collector. Okay. Um, I think a few years ago that the, uh, they combined first. it into one department, but it really is two separate operations, so I'd like to keep the accounting for it separately. It certainly helps, although there's only one collector treasurer. Mm -hmm. There is a collector side of the office and a treasury side of the uh, operation, and, and I thought it would be helpful for me anyway to keep the accounting separate. In our accounting system, uh, it, it's, a, it's very simple in our accounting system, so why not use the system to my advantage? Keep track of one, it for is that, me. Is that just one person, though? Oh, that is just one person, right? It's a one, it's a collector, The it's a city treasurer slash collector that was combined uh, many years ago, I think, in the ordinances. For, for members of the, of the community, this position, even though it appears to be part-time, it's actually part-time in two different departments, it's a full-time position, right. and the salary um, budgeted in each department is 34196 if you add it up, uh, this person has a salary combined of $68,392. Uh, is that correct, Mr. Anello? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Councilors, are there any additional questions here? <coughs> no? Okay. So that is it for the Budget and Finance Department. Now let's move on to Debt Services, which is... I just uh, want just one final question on this, Mr. Ionello. Sure, for, sure. Uh, for the budget and finance department, the total. What was the what's the, the total savings for the whole the whole complex? For the budget and finance division. Yeah. Uh, that should be on page. Just a minute. I think I can see it. I think it gives me a total. Yes, that's on page twenty nine. That's the division as a whole subtotaled on page 29. Okay, so, so you can see the overall budget uh, is. Well, it's $157,000? Uh, yes. Hmm. Uh, just as a general question, there's $157,000, almost $158,000 cut from one, one group. And I would assume, I haven't looked at the others yet, but I would assume there's also probably the same type of uh, trend in, in the other groups, too. Uh, it may not be quite as much. I mean, I, you know, again, uh, I tried to trim it as much as I could in my, you know, and I think uh, my division, including the IT department, you know, we have quite a few divisions in here. 
So the overall budget is roughly two and a half million dollars. So to cut a hundred thousand out of that is a little easier than cutting a hundred thousand <coughs> out of someone who has a smaller one, or, or it's easier if it's a larger budget. That's true. But I, I just would not want to see at some point uh, during the following year to have to come down for appropriation transfers because of a lack of funds to do particular things. We don't expect to, Councillor. I mean, you know, we, we've, although we've trimmed the budget, uh, you know, Rob was able to save a few bucks in the IT because of some licensing changes and a few other things like that. But uh, although we'd like to have more money in his budget to, uh, to repair, replace certain computers, he does have s uh, some funds available to do that. All right, thank you. Okay. Debt services, is that the first one? Okay, so now we move on to uh, debt services. It's on page 173. Um, so in our debt services last year, um, it was 14 million, wow, 14.7 million. This year is 12.6 million, meaning that it's going to change 2.1. Um, the big change when we see it comes from uh, a school loan principal that we had, from which we're going to be uh, saving 1.8 million, um, as well as the school loan interest. So combining the interest and the principal, it's the 2 million that we're going to be saving. That's right. Loan. Uh, that was what I would, that's what I was alluding to earlier. <coughs> I do have debt schedules. If you, uh, I don't know if anybody really wants them, but if I have an individual one for the councilors, if you'd like, I'll hand it out. If you'd like to see the details, mm -hmm. if that's more detailed than you like, I'll, I'll put it back. Would you like to see the details of the debt? I will appreciate oh, it. Yeah, yeah. I would appreciate it. I don't want to bore you with that. No, no. I, I you. This is definitely this is the important. Fund. Yeah, this is, these are the outstanding bonds. Very yeah. tiny. No, that's fine. I have to put my reading glasses on. Yes. <laughs> and I don't wear reading glasses generally. <laughs> Thank you. Time of year, time. Thank you. <laughs> I do have a question before we get into this. Um, and maybe you have the answer here. Um, in other loan principles, I'm, I'm assuming that it is other loan principles and the other loan interests are, are combined, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. Yes, we just have school and other, meaning, you know, the, this, these, that those are the school debts and then all other is the rest of the city debt. Mm -hmm. So that's just what other means, non-school. And if we expect an increase in the debt of, of the other loan, why, I mean, no, the question I'm gonna ask it differently. If we're saving in the other loan interest, why are we paying extra in the other loan principal? Can you, can you say that again? In other I words, mean, it, it, the other, other loan, loan principal, interest. the other, if, again, if you look at the debt schedule mm -hmm. for um, the other, lo the school loans are generally, uh, they're subtotaled on top. Those are the school loans. And the principal and interest, uh, there's a column, the, the last column is the amount outstanding the, from the right. Uh, the second column from the right is the interest payment, and those are the details of the interest payment. And then the, uh, the third column in from the right is the principal payment, and then there's the beginning balance. Don't so that's usually? what brings you from the beginning balance last year, minus the principal, minus the, or minus the principal gives you the outstanding balance this year, yeah. and those are the interest payments. So oftentimes there could be, uh, maybe we made our principal balance, uh, principal is often paid uh, generally twice a year and the interest is twice a year. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes the principal uh, might have, particularly if it's paid off or there could be a principal payment once a year but interest twice a year, depending on the individual debt schedules for each one of these debts. So in this particular case, um, the other loan, uh, uh, the interest payments came to 1,230,297 uh, and there were about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there were nine bonds outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, which included an interest payment. And you can see the very last two of those deficit financing notes, um, there's interest paid, we, we paid down, uh, we expect to pay down next year, 1,180,000, but there's no principal uh, on the, uh, we borrow this money quarterly and only once a year we pay it off. So I think that might, might look a little funny, but we do pay uh, quarterly interest um, uh, of about uh, 60 to $90,000. 
Where's the 1,180,000 that you just mentioned? It's uh, going up. It's the third column from the right. Uh -huh. From the bottom going up, it'll be the first number. It's about a halfway. It's 1,180,000. I wish I had a projector I could show you. Okay, I, yeah. Okay, I see now. Thank you. Thank you. And our outstanding uh, debt, although it, it doesn't show, we, we just, um, actually, I just... Um, borrowing on, on June 2nd uh, next week, and today assigned the loan documents. Uh, we currently owe, um, we are now down from 27.4 million, we are now down to 24 million, uh, $2,000 and $2,450. Hmm. So we paid, we paid down roughly 1.1 million per year for the last, uh, uh, starting in FY12 was our first payment, 12, 13, and 14. Okay. Sure. Does, um, this list don't contain loans that are were borrowed uh, by the enterprise. Uh, that's a separate, uh, a separate saving one. that one, but I do have the water debt, um, okay. which will show up on the, okay. I can give it to you now, if you, but it generally it, it's in the water side of the budget, so I can give it to you now or wait till we do the water. <laughs> we'll wait. Yeah. We'll wait, okay. Because I assume it's gonna come up. Yeah. I have extra copies. <clears throat> Councillors, any questions? Uh, Councillor Lapin. So it, it looks as though we renew the debt periodically on several of these, especially the government. Uh, was it G, what does this GO stand for? Government uh, order? Uh, general obligation bonds. Obligation bonds. The, the only ones that we renew, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the deficit financing notes, the 27 million, now down to 24 million. Where's that? We borrow that quarterly. Those are the last four uh, bonds uh, from the bottom of the page yeah. going up. 13 through 16? That's right. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, so we borrow that quarterly. We, you know, uh, September, uh, uh, September, December, March, and June. And uh, so we, we borrow roughly $6 million per quarter. And uh, so those, uh, those bonds are paid uh, quarterly. Everything else is a, uh, generally paid once or twice per year, but they don't, you know, it's just, we're, it's like a mortgage, we're just paying it down until it goes down to zero. So you can see the, um, just for example, the, the loan of 1997, number eight there, uh, it's 300,000, uh, we're gonna pay off 300,000 this year. We'll still have 16,000 in interest to pay, and we'll have zero at the end of uh, fiscal year 15. So that uh, that is a debt that come off our debt schedule next year. This is our last year; we have to budget for it. So that'll help us 300. That'll give us 300,000 in our general fund budget next year. Hmm. So when we talk about Wall Street, we talk about when we negotiate when our 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 credit rating is that we call it our bond yes, rating bond, bond rating, rating. Uh, improves. Where will it manifest itself on this through 13 through 16? Is that where we'll see that if it improves, the interest rate will go down? Well, the, the deficit bonds help uh, help a little bit, but the, um, uh, the, uh, the all of our bonds, what helps us tremendously is most of our bonds are are funded through the Municipal Finance uh, Act, Oversight Act, which means uh, Oversight Board, Municipal Finance Oversight Board uh, approves our debt and, uh, and they'll, um, the state will guarantee, uh, the state will take, uh, will reduce our cherry sheet distributions or estate aid distributions to pay off the bondholders. So that's like a guarantee that they're gonna get paid. So that helps us out a lot. Uh, our underlying um, bond rating, however, also factors into the interest. People will, will charge us to, uh, to, to borrow money. And, uh, and that's why I think what you're alluding to. Is it on new? New debt or on it, just existing debt? Well, both? it's on new debt, uh, but the existing debt, um, you know, that we, um, every time we go to the markets, we do ask for a rating. And in our case, we do it quarterly. <clears throat> uh, so we have quarterly conference calls with the ratings agencies for these uh, bond anticipation note renewals, deficit bond renewals. And uh, so they're kind of familiar with Lawrence and what we've been doing, at least since I've been here, uh, and since we've had the overseer. Um, and uh, so they kind of, uh, keep tabs on us. Uh, we're able to update them quarterly on what's happening in Lawrence and how we're balancing our budget and how we're ma uh, managing quarterly and so on. So, uh, 
uh, they kind of have a good handle on where we're at and they can see so the marked improvement. Because I see the interest rate has been reduced on 13 through 15. Well, Free yeah, and, th and those are those are bond anticipation notes, so they're not borrowing long term, so we get good rates on them. They're only uh, the one year bonds, one year notes, uh, and they're also, as I just mentioned, guaranteed by the uh, uh, state to get paid uh, directly from the state. They don't have to wait for us to cut them a check. So let me play one hypothetical game with you. What, well, first of all, what, what's our bond rating right now? Uh, in uh, for S and P, it's. Um, um, there's S and P has a uh, we have an A three rating or something like that. I don't know off the top of my head. And with the with the Moody's, it's B double A. Okay, so let's stick with Moody's. Yeah. So what's the next? Moody's is like a notch below where we'd like to be. We'd like to get in the A series. So what's the next? What's <coughs> the next one for Moody's then? Moody's would be into an A. It would be what? What? To an A rate. We're at uh, triple or B double A, and it would be to an actual A rating. Plain A. So it. let's say hypothetically that they think we're doing a sweet job over here in the city of Lawrence and they improve our, our, our bond rating from a BAA to an A. What does that mean, bottom line, for, for debt service? Well, it's going to help. Uh, right now, the only one borrowing is the water department because they have those, those bonds. But if we, we do anticipate um, going to the markets for some capital improvements, which are sorely needed here in Lawrence, and that would certainly help get us a better rate if we have, uh, if we can get that rating from trip from B to, uh, up to A along with S and P, um, that would certainly help us a, a bit. So that's only on the, so far on the water department side, but not on our, on not on our municipal side. Well, we, we, I don't anticipate issuing any new debt uh, in the foreseeable future uh, in the next, you know, for the city side, but there is uh, a lot of water debt that's being issued. Well, I'm sorry, when was the last time we tried to, t to refinance the loan of 2001, which is number one, and the loan of 2002, which is number two, which compared to everything else is extremely high? At a four well, it was just uh, many of these bonds have already been refinanced. Some of them are uh, just last fall we had our uh, financial advisor take a look at all of our outstanding debt and see if there were any refinancing opportunities. Sorry, she did that about a year before. but There's no outstanding debt. I'm, I, I'm, why is this even on here? One and two aren't even, and, and oh, they're four. just I, you know, it's uh, it just we should just delete them off the spreadsheet. It's just a, it's a, it's just a work paper we use to calculate okay. it. So I'm looking. I at didn't pretty it up for the council. I'm sorry. Sorry, it looks good. So the only one that, then the only one that that has any kind of big numbers then would be number five. I'm not sure what year the 2006. That's yes. at a four four and number seven four point two. Yeah, you can see the expiration dates uh, in okay. the uh, fourth column there, third or fourth column. So that debt will be, we won't expire until February of 21. But we can't, my point is that we can't, we can't reduce those. We can't try to reapply. Well, uh, and, and just in the, in the last fall, we did ask the uh, first, uh, West, first Southwest went through all our outstanding debt and looked for refinancing opportunities. Yeah. And there was a slight savings, um, but again, based on the market conditions at the present time, uh, it was less than 50,000 and um, and by the time we would get out to the markets it might have changed so it, they recommended us not to make a move at that time uh, some of these bonds uh, the, you know some of them that look like they're at a high interest rate uh, some of them do have non callable features which means we can't pay them off early unfortunately so my last comment tell me if I'm right about this so if this is a family household budget we would consider this to be a credit card debt of about 40,000 almost $41,000, so out of a whatever, what's our total dollar amount here in the budget? 2.7, 2.8, what are we looking at? The debt service is 12.6 no, million. I'm talking about our entire budget. Oh, the entire, um, 200 and, 247 million general fund budget. So 247 of, million, 222. Out of almost 250 million out of almost a, quarter of a billion dollars. Right. Um, we have debt of right now $41 million. I'm using rough figures. That's almost like a credit card debt. We got to pay this down every year. It, it's 90 million. It's 40, 49 uh, million in school debt and 40 million in city debt. My bad, yes. 90, yes, 90 million. So out of the quarter billion, we're 90, 90, 90 million dollars in debt. Yeah. Would that, would that be, if I had to explain to a constituent what this is about, would that be a good way to explain it? 
almost like a credit card. We got to pay this off every year, every month. Well, it's certainly not. It would be more like a mortgage because these are not okay. credit cards. Uh, these are really, you know, long term. You know, building schools more like a. Okay. We don't really borrow. Um, well, I, let me rephrase that. The deficit bonds, I guess, could be likened to a credit card because we really spent those. We overspent our budgets in those years, and when the uh, when the state bailed us out, uh, that uh, twenty seven point four million dollars was really just you know, salaries and everything else, we just overspent our budget and then we had to get a bailout from the state. We got legislation to pay that deficit off over 20 years, which is what we're doing. And so what number, thank you for, am I, So I that's 24 million. What's our, what was our final, we went from 27.4 to what? 27.4 to 24 million. 24 million, uh, 24.002.450. So the, the big, the big one that was three years ago, bond authorization, receiver, that whole nut was a 27.4, now we're down to 24 million. Right. And that's a 20 year, is it a 20 year? And we're it? amortizing it over a 20 year period, but we can pay it off sooner um, if, if we have the resources to do that. We're on a 20 year vesting schedule right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Right. Question. Councilor Maldonado. Um, the enterprise funds, uh, the water department. Yes. They are able to borrow money on their own without getting anybody's approval? Oh no, they come to the council. Uh, to the it's council. just, it's general obligation bonds. It's just, uh, we, we um, uh, expect the water department pay for their own debt. Uh, so they, have, they also have a debt service, um, which when we do the water department budget, I'll hand it out, but they have roughly, I can't see it. Um, <laughs> rough, they have roughly an outstanding debt uh, at 630.14, they had 52 million, almost 53 million in outstanding debt. So we have 90 million on the general fund side, 50 million on the enterprise fund side for about $130 million in debt total for the city of Lawrence. And they have some additional projects, uh, a 24 million that was authorized last year, which will be slowly added into these numbers. Um, <clears throat> so they're managing their they're managing that number very carefully as, as we did projections, I think through 2016 or 19 last year to the council, um, uh, the water department came in and, and gave you some projections out several years, five or six years to make sure we could afford that last debt borrowing. Okay, councilors, have there any additional questions? Okay, moving on to um, risk management. Page uh, 204. Yep. If I could just mention to the counselors, these intergovernmental assessments, there's nothing, there, there's very little in there. It's uh, those, uh, those are the, and they, we, we expend it. Those are the cherry sheet charges, and you'll see expenditures. We, we don't budget the, um, their cherry sheet assessments that we don't budget them as an appropriation, but they are actually uh, as part of uh, doing the accounting correctly. We do expense it to these categories. So you will see expenditures, but nothing budgeted in 14 or 15. All right. Any questions for intergovernmental assessment? No? So we were, we're gonna move on to um, risk management, page 204. Um, last year we approved 195,000, well, risk management, other charges, yeah. And 204 two. is the total for risk management. There are two, two insurance policies which equal this number. Mm -hmm. And on 205, it's a uh, fire insurance for the fire insurance vehicles is basically the ladder truck. Um, so they bought an 800 or 900,000 ladder truck with grant funds uh, last year or the year before. And the insurance on that is, uh, uh, substantial. <coughs> uh, so it's estimated at 50,000. We already have our premiums um, there on a calendar year basis, so we know what it is. Uh, we're fairly certain of what it is, uh, but we don't know what the la next last six months of next year may be, but uh, we put a number in here that we're pretty comfortable with. And um, on page 206, we on have... On page um, 206 is the rest of the auto insurance for the city, all the uh, police vehicles, uh, DPW vehicles, and there was a marked increase in our premiums last year. They increased almost 50,000. Uh, so I factored that in this year. So when you, 
you'll see the FY14 actual through May uh, will approximate, uh, I think we're estimated about 180 something thousand. But next year we plan on 100, and, uh, our estimate is 190,000. Last year there were quite a few claims uh, in the DPW department primarily, also the police department, but DPW primarily and, uh, and the insurance companies uh, are trying to recoup those losses. Was there any particular reason why there was an increase in premium? It was mainly the, um, mainly the um, uh, claims that were, were put in on our vehicles. Oh, claims? Yes, okay. we, we had, uh, I think we had some bad drivers uh, and uh, we had a lot of uh, damaged vehicles. Sometimes it's not our fault. I know the, uh, one of the fire uh, vehicles got hit by, had its lights on and everything and somebody still banged into it. Uh, and didn't total it, but did some significant damage. And of course, that's what we're insured for. And then our insurance company hopefully got some, something back from the other vehicle. But uh, we had a lot of claims last year, so our, our premiums went up 50,000 last year. Councilor Ramon, um, Aquino. <laughs> Do we have any reports of the incident? There are some reports which we passed on to DPW for uh, for the, the claims that were made. We, we did receive a printout from the insurance carrier. Um, you know, these are the claims that we had. I mean, it's hard to really tell. They don't give us a premium for each vehicle. We have a group policy, but they did uh, uh, give us a printout of all the vehicles that had claims on it last year, and that's why our premium was jumped up substantially. Um, do you know if, they, if we keep any reports of what happened, what kind of incident was? Uh, yeah, I know DPW does, because uh, each, each one of these got reported and we put in an insurance claim. Um, so there's a report that was filed to get the insurance proceeds to repair the truck or trucks. All right, thank you. All right. Councilor Toomey. The um, Gilmet School Go med school. Uh, when that uh, is finally settled, where would we see that payment from the insurance companies? Where would that appear? Well, the Gilmet um, and or the high school, those uh, those proceeds <coughs> would come back into the general fund because we've expended, um, you know, um, for Gilmet and the high school, we've expended uh, substantial dollars, uh, some of it from the school budget to do some of the remediation at Gilmet. Uh, some of it from free cash, which we voted for free cash for, for uh, you know, pay attorney's fees. We also borrowed three and a half million for the Gamet School to remediate that issue. So we would like to, uh, any proceeds, pay down the debt uh, and also uh, reimburse the school department for whatever they were out of pocket and then reimburse the city for whatever it's out of pocket. Are you familiar with any, any, any knowledge about where it stands right now? Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with it. We're, we're following the, those, those two places cases are uh, being followed very closely, uh, but it's a very lengthy uh, uh, legal process. <coughs> and um, uh, the Gamet School was just, uh, uh, last summer they primarily did most of the work. Uh, and um, uh, we spent, uh, we bonded for three and a half million and it, we spent three and a half million. We were able to keep the repairs to the three and a half million that we borrowed, uh, but that's a, that's a substantial uh, sum of money uh, that we're looking to recoup from the bondholders. Okay. But that'll be a couple of years go through the court system unless they settle with us early, which is always a hope. Okay, Councilors, any additional questions? All right, let's move on to um, other financial use, financing sources. It's on page um, 207, 207 and 208. So last year we approved two hundred forty-nine thousand uh, dollars. This year the mayor's recommending two hundred ninety thousand uh, dollars. That's an increase of forty forty-one thousand dollars, basically. Well, this is a the matching requirement for uh, police department grants. We get some grants from the police department, and the general fund has to match uh, a certain share. And the two hundred ninety thousand four eighty-three is their estimate for uh, grants that they receive next year that we're going to need a match for. So. Uh, Last year was 249,000. We increased a little bit to 290,000, but uh, we do get uh, the police department does get a substantial sum in grants, so we're still getting a good deal. All right, councilors, are there any questions? Uh, you indicated that this is for the police department match plan to to match grants matching funds that are required to get grants. Uh, the city has to come up with a piece, so we yeah. we 
instead of just burying it in their budget, we put it in this line item and it's, it's a reserve so they can't, not that they would spend it on anything, but we'd like to have it a special line item so it's available to show the government we match the grant. Councillors, are there any questions here? All right. It seems like we have completed our first budget hearing for the day. Um, <coughs> I'm not going to thank Mr. Anello yet because this is only the beginning. It's so. only the beginning. Go well. Be here every night. No, you. So um, I just. My job, so don't. Yeah, no, no. Don't thank me for doing my job. You guys no, no. are paying me, as I just alluded to earlier. I appreciate it. No, but you have done a wonderful job anyway, so. We appreciate it. I, do, I just want to remind the, the members of the community that tomorrow we will begin at 5 p.m. Um, and we will be reviewing Council on Aging, the Public Library, other human services, Greater Lawrence Technical High School, Lawrence Public Schools, and the Chatters uh, and Choice Schools, uh, followed by the Ordinance Committee meeting, which will be at 7.30 p.m. Um, once again, <coughs> I will invite the public to come attend. And if they have any questions, please uh, be here. We have a full house right now. No, I'm just kidding. There's nobody in the room. I wish we had a full house. And, and this is your budget. This is your tax money. And, and you should become, be involved. Uh, counselors, can I please get a motion to recess on this? Motion to recess. Motion to recess has been made. Second. And second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. I will be seeing you guys tomorrow. <laughs>